right, guys, welcome back to another video. Lots of news yesterday that came out from specifically in regards to Xbox, but also some other interesting things that we will go over in today's show. If you do enjoy daily gaming news and content, make sure to hit that subscribe, share the video, like the video, and also check out my Spotify. Link is in the description for the audio version of this show. But we will start off here with a major retirement and then replacement for Xbox. The head of Xbox Game Studios, Alan Hartman, is retiring, and he is going to be replaced here by Craig Duncan, who was previously the boss over at Rare. So it says here, the head of Xbox Game Studios, Alan Hartman, will retire from the company at the end of November with Rare boss Craig Duncan taking over. Now, these are both guys who have done a lot at Xbox, of course. And I mean, Rare as a studio itself has a huge history and pedigree in the gaming industry, going all the way back to like the Donkey Kong days, the Banjo and Kazooie and everything. And even right now, with one of the most successful live service games out there, Sea of Thieves, it has done a, a lot of great stuff in the gaming industry. So Craig Duncan here taking over for Alan Hartman, I actually think is a good hire. And I think we are going to see some good progress and maybe some new interesting IPs and games and ideas coming out of Xbox Game Studios. But what this role basically is, is that he's going to be reporting over to Matt Booty who is the president of game content and studios and his new role is going to be including all of the studios at xbox halo studios with the newly named halo studios the coalition turn 10 playground games rare obsidian ninja theory compulsion games the initiative double fine in exile undead labs world's edge and more so all of those first party xbox studios i guess you could say pre-acquisition are what he is going to be taking part of being the leader of so that is a major role and that is something that xbox needs a good leader at the helm for they need to make sure that those studios are putting out quality content on time and as well making sure that there are no issues that have occurred like what we had with redfall with just the debacle of that game you don't want that coming out of more of the xbox first party studios so craig duncan has a big task ahead i think he will do a good job just based off of his previous titles and just off his previous work they say here that he has led rare for the past 14 years overseeing the studio's connect titles the launch of its live service game sea of thieves which has more than 40 million players since it did launch in 2018 and i think sea of thieves alone is just a great work something that came pretty much out of nowhere I don't know if people expected it to be as big as it is, and it is still thriving today. And it is something that a lot of companies are continuously trying to do and failing at, which is making a successful long-term games as a service game. And, and Craig Duncan and the team at Rare were able to do that with a Sea of Thieves. And if you look at Alan Hartman, I mean, he was known for a lot of things, but they say here he was best known for leading and forming Turn 10 in 2005, which is behind the Forza franchise, which is one of Xbox's most successful franchises. And he became the lead of Xbox Game Studios last year. So lots of things going on here at Xbox. Also shuffling around, of course, with retirement. And if you're wondering what is happening at Rare now, who's going to be replacing Craig Duncan? It's going to be Joe Neat and Jim Horth. And Joe Neat joined Rare in 2013, led the Sea of Thieves project as the executive producer producer and prior to rare he held a senior role at sumo digital and midway and then horth has been a part of the rare team for over 20 years and has held multiple roles most recently as the studio director so that is the change up shake up i guess you could say because of al hartman's retirement here at xbox game studios and we're going to see now for the next number of years until maybe one of them leaves and then they get replaced what they're going to be able to do to improve and make xbox game studios overall better and one of the games coming out of rare that's a lot of people are looking forward to a lot of people want to see more about it including myself i'm very excited to see what this game is all about and it's been about five years since we did see the first announcement for everwild and there's been a lot of rumors about having to restart and there's been development issues all of that type of stuff has happened with this game since they did announce it but rare is working on it we've seen what they can do with sea of thieves and i think this is going to be another one of those games that has potential to be huge if they can do what they did similarly with sea of thieves and they're probably making sure that before they show off anything else, before they give any gameplay of it, that it is going to be in the best day possible. And it looks like right now, this is based off of what Jess Corden is saying, that Everwild development is going well at Rare. This is via the Xbox 2 podcast. And he does say this, that he's heard that development on Everwild is going well and that we should be seeing the game reappear at some point in the future. So there you have it I, I mean this upcoming year's xbox showcase 
I would expect Everwild to be there. A lot of people were kind of thinking it may be at 2024 showcase. I never for a second thought that they would show it then. But this year in the 2025 showcase, I am fully expecting Everwild. I'm fully expecting something, whether it is just an update as to how the game is going, maybe a quick gameplay clip so we kind of get more of an understanding as to what exactly this game is all about. But it's going on five years now, which will be in July, that we haven't heard a thing about Everwild. And now I think is the right time to give an update on this game, especially if, like Jess is saying, the development is going well. It has progressed further than what we had previously thought. All right, let's talk Call of Duty. We have some big news here regarding Call of Duty that... I don't know if people were expecting this because of the whole ABK, CMA concessions, the EU, everything with the cloud gaming and how Xbox had to give the licensing and cloud gaming exclusive rights worldwide to Ubisoft. One of the things that they were able to control is that now Ubisoft got to choose where games like Call of Duty were going to be available on the cloud, which would mean they may not even be available on Xbox Cloud Gaming. But luckily, Ubisoft is licensing these games, which is weird to think about. Xbox owns the IPs, they own the studios, but Ubisoft gets to choose whether they go on Xbox Cloud Gaming. It looks like they are going to be licensing Call of Duty to Xbox and Xbox Cloud Gaming for streaming, and they will and they will be available on October 25th. So Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and Black Ops 6 all coming over to xbox cloud gaming which is a massive win if you are subscribed to the game pass service where you get access to cloud gaming it says here that all three games will be playable with xbox cloud gaming for game pass ultimate members starting on october 25th and it was previously confirmed that black ops 6 would be the first call of duty to launch into game pass on day one and we're coming up on a massive day here for xbox to really see what this is going to be able to do to move the needle with subscriptions or with consoles or just in general how it's going to affect the call of duty sales by launching the biggest game essentially every single year into a subscription service black ops 6 day one october 26 so very exciting to see how what that will do but it launching into the cloud is great because even if you think that you don't want to play multiplayer on the cloud whatsoever you, you don't have a good enough connection it's too laggy or things like that you could still go and experience the single player campaign on the cloud which is something that i would have no problem doing the cloud to me over the last year or so has really improved i've said this on multiple videos now i'm not just saying this because call of duty is coming over but i've said this for a while that cloud gaming over the last year has really gotten better for me i've been able to use it on my mobile network and it's been flawless on my internet it's been flawless so i could see myself if i'm just kind of casually wanting to sit back and play a, a fun multiplayer match i'm not taking it that seriously just use the cloud and just see how it works and if it is good enough hey just sometimes if i want to go lay in bed instead of sitting at my computer or sitting on my console just attach my controller to my phone and jump into a call of duty multiplayer match and hang out with my friends all that type of stuff like i think like all that will be really cool so happy that these games are coming to the cloud and it is showing here that ubisoft is going to be giving xbox cloud gaming the rights to be able to put their own games on their own cloud service which is definitely a good good thing all right now with all of that being said we now are going to get an xbox partner showcase on October 17th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we're going to see a bunch of games, which is always exciting. The partner showcases is third parties, indies, all of that stuff. Xbox put this announcement out yesterday and say, we're thrilled to announce the next Xbox partner preview. Our no fluff, all games broadcast. And it's great that they recognize that this shows. I think that Xbox has definitely been listening to the feedback when it comes to their showcases over the last few years. One of the biggest criticisms that they have had is just the amount of fluff, the narration, just wasted time. People just want to see games and they've been doing that well with their most recent showcases and with their partner previews. This is not the first one. One, I thought the last one that it was really good. And again, we're getting here in all games broadcast. We're not going to have to sit through any stuff that we really just don't care about. This one's coming October 17th. And they say we'll feature a mix of new and upcoming games. They say for you from incredible partners like Remedy Entertainment, Sega, 505 games, and many more with over a dozen new trailers over the course of around 25 minutes. And some of the games that you will see gameplay of 
Alan Wake's 2 expansion, The Lake House, an action-packed new trailer for Like a Dragon Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. They say a peek at multiple bosses in the dark fantasy action game Wu-Chang Fallen Feathers, multiple world premieres, and other great titles coming to Xbox consoles, Windows, PC, and the thing I'm most excited about whenever they show these off, games coming to Xbox Game Pass. So I will absolutely be tuning into this. I can't wait to see what they do show off, but I mean, this is just a, another thing to look forward to with a hugely packed end of the year season for xbox and for xbox game pass all right let's talk about this this was an interesting announcement that we got yesterday this is for a mobile game that's going to be announced by NetEase and bungie so basically this is going to be bungie destiny playstation jumping into mobile space with netties here and this is a game called destiny rising they gave a developer preview to kind of give you a look of what this game is going to be all about but what the big thing here i will say is that what this is showing is this is going to be another major step forward another big jump by playstation to try to expand out their ecosystem try to get that big hit game where they can make money in the markets that they do not dominate in and where there is a lot more room for growth which is going to be the mobile space this game is called destiny rising is a free-to-play sci-fi rpg shooter for ios and android devices which is being developed and published by netties games under the license of bungie you can pre-register if you want uh, for the to close alpha test it is now open which will begin on november 1st in the u.s in canada and they say here this is kind of the description of enter an era of heroes and legends where familiar destiny faces meet intriguing new characters each with a rich story unique personality and formidable skills and experience the top tier sci-fi shooter action in fpp or tpp as you embark on a new adventure in an alternate destiny timeline play as these unique characters to defend future earth and reclaim humanity's future so there you have it if you like destiny I feel like this is just basically going to be the exact same thing in mobile form. Obviously, there will be concessions because it's going to be on a mobile platform on Android and iOS, but the core gameplay, I think, will be very similar. We'll see. I mean, there is, like I said, that closed alpha test that you can go and sign up for. But again, huge. This needs to work for PlayStation. I think there is a chance with the Destiny IP with Bungie behind it, they have a chance that something good could come out of this. And that will be one of their long lasting games as a service games that just makes money roll in that their major competitor Xbox has multiple of right now in, in the mobile space, especially with the ABK acquisition. All right, let's jump over here to talk about Steam Next Fest. It is now live and there's thousands of free demos. If you kind of wanted to check out all the games that are available, this is going to be running until October 21st at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. So between now and then, Go check out demos of games you do want to play. I think Next Fest is great when they have this and you get to just get a jump into seeing what is out there for games that you've never experienced before. And in addition to those demos, it says Steam Next Fest includes dozens of live streams that will give players a chance to chat with developers about their upcoming games. So if you're into Steam and Next Fest, it's live. Go check it out, and I'm sure there'll be lots of information there for you to see. We'll jump over here. Tron Catalyst is a new game coming out. It's a new isometric action game from Bithel Games. If you like the Tron franchise, this one will be for you to check out. It says that it will be coming to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, and Nintendo Switch via Devolver Digital's big fan game publishing label. They did put out this NASA trailer. You can see kind of what it is going for, the gameplay, the isometric. It looks actually pretty cool, pretty fun. I mean, the Tron universe is an interesting one. So there it is. If you uh, want to play some more Tron, this game will be coming out, and it will be available here in 2025 we don't have an official release day yet and finally we have two things to talk about actually some more bigger things that end off the show is first of all the playstation 5 30th anniversary edition the pre-orders everything has kind of been a mess i mean they didn't release enough people they're scalping it it's been absolutely crazy we have some more for here about uk retailer argos which is now canceling playstation 5 30th anniversary edition pre-orders they have updated this and they said that argos confirms that some pre-orders have been canceled after being processed incorrectly but they are going through and canceling it which i think is pretty crazy because of one how hard these were to get 
you probably spent a lot of time getting it. Scalpers and bots picked up a ton of them. And if you were lucky enough to get one of them and then it canceled, it would be absolutely infuriating. But here's what the Argo spokesperson does say. They say, we saw a huge demand for the PlayStation 30th anniversary limited edition console and unfortunately had to cancel some orders after they were processed incorrectly. We have contacted the customers affected to tell them how sorry we are for the disappointment this has caused to confirm they will receive a refund, a full refund. I mean, that the refund all that stuff i mean if you were trying to get one of these a lot of people are getting it for the nostalgia for the rarity of it potentially to resell it i don't know if that apology is going to do anything for them but there's just kind of more craziness here with the ps5 30th anniversary editions so finally just to end off with some more call of duty news it looks like there is going to be some new awesome sound and audio innovations in black ops 6 this says here that the latest call of duty black ops 6 intel drop shares insight into the innovations to the game's sound from treyarch software's audio team new spatial reverb will affect the game's audio escape with footsteps echoing down long hallways and gunshots and grenades realistically filling the space around a player Obviously, in Call of Duty and in multiplayer shooters, audio is one of the most important things for a good experience, for a competitive experience, just for being able to hear enemies around you when they're running, being able to hear the gunshots around you, the grenades, all of that type of stuff. So cool to see that they're making it better than it previously was. They say the audio for Black Ops 6 was developed in partnership with Microsoft's Project's acoustic system, and it is a physics-based acoustic model that replicates the complex wave physics of sound in 3D game environments without requiring manual tricks. To enhance the game's audio further, Black Ops 6 will also include an enhanced headphone mode, more accessibility options, and live mixing. So pretty cool. Some new audio stuff in collaboration with Microsoft. And I mean, they are the same company now, but it's interesting that they collaborated on this, probably have been collaborating on this for a while, even before the entire ABK thing went through. But here it is. And we will see again, October 25th, when it does drop, just how much better the audio is. I mean, there was the beta and everything. I thought the audio was good. Maybe there will be some updates and everything before the official release date. But I'll end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.